VPN review. You don't need one. <laughs> you already have a VPN if you have a Linux server. We're going to use SSH to create a VPN using a program called S Shuttle. I believe that's how it's pronounced. So basically all it does is take an existing SSH connection that you already have to a server and funnel all your traffic through it like a VPN would do, but just using SSH. You don't even need root access on the server that you're going to be SSHing to. You just need SSH to it. All the fa fancy magic is done client side. It's, it's described as a poor man's VPN and that's basically what it is. It's a VPN that requires no server configuration. You just handle everything on your client. It's brilliant software. I use it every day. I wouldn't be able to do my job without it. It's probably my favorite piece of software besides SSH itself. Quite like SSH. Don't hold me to that though. My favorite list of software video coming soon. Maybe, if you want it. So uh, let's take a look at Shuttle here. You just install it from your repos or using pip. That's how it's spelt there. Python needs to be installed on the host machine, which if it's a Linux host, it is. Maybe not Python 3.6 or higher if you're running an old version of Red Hat Enterprise or, or CentOS or some of the older Debian versions, I think. And if you are, and that's unfortunate, you don't have to watch the rest of this video. Well, it might be interesting to try and convince your resident system admin to install Python 3 on that server. If they haven't already, there's probably numerous issues with that system admin rather than just not having Python 3 on their server. Anyway, yeah, you also need root access on your machine because it modifies IP tables. It basically tells IP tables to be like, ah, send all the traffic through this tunnel that I've created. Let me first just prove to you that this does work. If I search, where am I? St. Helier, Jersey, which is accurate. Every IP address in Jersey says you're in St. Helier, which is the, the capital town of Jersey, uh, even though I might not be there, but I'm in Jersey. Which is nice. So if I use S Shuttle here, let's bounce it all through my web server, which I showed in the previous video, the server running my website, as well as numerous other ones. And now a VPN, if I use S Shuttle, I can send it to, you just put dash R and then you put the user at the host you want to go to. So I log into my server as root, which is really bad, I know. And then you put the subnet you want to send through. So if I, I want to put the whole internet in, so you just do zero slash zero, which basically means any request, send it through this VPN. And that'll work, but I'm going to put dash dash DNS at the end to also send my DNS request through. This is important because you're trying to do something, uh, if you're a journalist and want to report sensitive information, you don't want to leak your DNS. There we go, run that. Tells me tells me off for not using IPv6, whatever. So if I now open up a, a new Google window and search, where am I? It now says that I am in France, which is true. So if I go to ipinfo.io, you can see it says I'm in Cali, France, that's the reverse lookup name, I need to change that. But yeah, this is the IP address of my server. And yeah, it's hosted by OVH, there you go. This shows that it works, and it's actually sending all my traffic through my web server. Pretty cool. That's as good as a normal VPN already, and that's basically the main reason for it. But what you can also do is you can send specific subnets through it, just by specifying the subnet here. So like, let's do, do 192.168.1.1 through there, 1.0 slash 24, sorry. Uh, so the 192.168.1.0 range. That range is a private IP, private IP range as specified underneath RFC 1918, which you actually need to memorize if you're going to take Cisco exams. So you actually need to memorize that number, which is stupid. But yeah. Anyway, so this is useful if you if you're say let's say this is my house and I'm away. This is what I actually use it for. I can run this command and it, this is the private. IP address range of my house and likely of yours as well. When I go to this address in my browser, it would be like I'm in my house when I'm actually not. This is very useful. Uh, and this is also really useful for sort of work. Like if there's no corporate VPN that you have for your job, or if there's a really horrible remote access solution for your job, like Citrix, God forbid, if you're using that, I feel for you. If you're watching this video, you probably work with Linux, so you ha probably have access, maybe not admin access, but access to a server, and then you can just run a shuttle like this, and then if that server has access to the rest of your company's LAN, you can change this here, the, the IP address of the LAN, uh, so it might be in the 10 range or the 172 range, or 192 range as well. Uh, so you could change it to that and then you'd be in your network. So that means whenever you type an address like this into your browser, it'll actually be sent through the tunnel that we create, which is really useful. It, it's basically like you're in the office, say, or you're in the LAN or what, how I do it. It's like I'm in my house. Basic VPN sort of principles, but using SSH and not having to set up a VPN. It's wonderful stuff. You can run sort of VPNs on top of VPNs using this as well. So I could actually jump to one server. So I could jump to my web server but then if my web server has access to a network that my home doesn't, I can then slap another one of those on. Bam, slaps hood of this server. This baby can run so many VPNs on it. Um, and that will also, so that will tunnel requests through that trap tunnel and layer multiple VPNs on top of each other and you can get really complicated and have crazy hops. So you can get 
You can bounce through multiple private networks if you really want to or need to do that for whatever reason. And you can even do it for more useful things. So you might be saying, why not just use SSH port forwarding? Well, that's slower than this because this uses some special technology. It only sends your data. It doesn't actually assemble the data as packets on your host. So it actually blasts the data through this tunnel, this SSH tunnel that's created, which is as secure as a VPN, by the way, if not more so, because it basically uses the same encryption technology. Uh, and then on the remote machine, it only then assembles the pack, it assembles them into packets and then sends them to where they're going. It's actually much quicker than using an SSH tunneling. Yeah, and, and then you don't have to, you know, if SSH tunneling, you have to type like localhost, then the port number or whatever, which is just horrible. It's just much quicker and much simpler. And your admin can't disable this. So your system admin can't disable this. They can disable tunneling in SSH configuration if they want to, if they're evil or smart. Don't blame me if you get into trouble for this, for using this to bypass your rubbish remote access software at work. I do hope you learned something, though. This is a really, really useful tool. I can't do my job without it. Before this, we were using like eSocks and horrible socks proxies and uh, IPsec VPNs, which just ugh, not good. This is the future because it's so easy. It's good software. Consider using it. Yep, hope you learned something. Bye. Please visit my website and Twitter for more information. Thank you.